I'd usually uh, record in the living room, but uh, Cat's not been feeling so well. He's getting better, but I don't want to disturb him while he's trying to nap, so... Um, a fellow member of Vacuum Land asked me to give him my thoughts on this machine. Uh, I think he said it would be interesting, you know, to get one of these at work to clean hallways with. And uh, so I just thought that I would do kind of an overview, a little bit of a demo on this thing, and, uh, you know, essentially review it. So, this is... You know, it has the Bissell branding on it, but it is not made by them. And I'm still not sure who makes this thing. I think it might be Mastercraft, but I'm not entirely sure on that. It's been released under many names, um, including Auric as their Comback. It's even been released under the Kirby name. The Comback, like, I think 2200, 2400, and either 26 or 2800 it something like that different widths but this one is a 28 inch here's our model tag this one too is 28 inches and um i just wanted to note two things about this uh first off i am not using the proper bags on it because i don't have any so <laughs> i've got a kirby bag on it currently and, uh, and while a Kirby bag is pretty large, it's, uh, you know, a little bit smaller than, you know, the typical bag. I think these are supposed to have, like, a seven-gallon capacity or something. And I've noticed that Mastercraft does have HEPA ones, so maybe I'll look into buying a pack of those. Not that I'll be using this thing much. And, um, this is their connection between these two pieces. It's just a piece of two-inch vacuum hose. And that's obviously not very well sealed, so I think as the bag clogs up, you know, you could see some dust leakage around there. They should have done something a little bit different with that, uh, just to increase its filtration. And, uh, let's see. The handle on this does fold down. It has a little pull pin right here, and then you can fold the handle over just like that cord on here is supposed to be, I think, 100 feet. There we go. And there is room for another pin over here, but it doesn't have one, unless, you know, the seller, like, broke it off. And then here we have our height adjustment. So, it kind of reminds me of, like, a Kirby or a Royal, because it ratchets... And then, you know, you would push this one to raise it up. And then the black one to lower it. Now, let's take a look at the underside of this. All right. So, our front wheels are caster wheels. Makes it a little easier for maneuverability purposes. Um, our brush here... These are actually fairly soft. And then this, maybe I should turn the light on. There we go. This is to prevent scattering. And um, it's just, you know, it's got a little channel in two places where it's held on. So it kind of auto adjusts to whatever surface you're on. And you know, it's just meant to prevent the brush roll from kicking things around. And then the brush roll itself has in, in total of four rows of brushes, wide diameter. And it does have a kind of a chevron pattern leading things to the intake here. And I'm sure, you know, anyone looking at this already knows this is a direct air machine. So everything, you know, that gets sucked up has to pass through the fan that's in here. So, one should be a little bit careful of what the, or maybe careful isn't the word for it, mindful, perhaps, of what they pick up, because even though these fans are big, heavy metal, they're not indestructible. So, I mean, if you can avoid it, you would want to 
avoid picking up, you know, metallic objects. Possibly even look at installing a, uh, a magnetic bumper on the front of this. <clears throat> and, um, I know when I first bought this, I thought, you know, I would possibly, you know, fold it up and store it on its side like this, but I couldn't help but notice that, and I'm guessing this happened in shipping, you know, it's a big heavy unit, but we have a cracked area right here, so it's like maybe this plastic isn't quite as durable as I thought, because I mean, there is definitely some flex to it, so it's like I probably wouldn't want to chance it, you know. I mean, that's not to say it's, like, poorly built or anything, but, I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't like the idea of storing it like this, as it might cause it to, like, permanently bend over time or something. Ah, and here we have the belt. It is a non-stretch style belt, and it grew it's grooved on the inside so it should provide belt traction for a very long time what really really you can't see that i'm busy here <sighs> cats love them but they're a pain sometimes oh well what was I saying? Oh, right. Plastic on here. I mean, you know, this thing, most of the components are supported on, you know, metal frame pieces. You know, the wheels are on a metal frame. And then, of course, you know. So, I mean, the things that are really bearing the weight of the machine are on a piece of metal frame. But, obviously, they're connected into the plastic shell at some point. It's, and then the motor supported there too. And strangely, you know, the machine is rated for eight and a half amps, but I see the motor here has a 10 amp. So a 10 amp rating on it. So I don't know what that's about. Now, before I do get started on this part of it, uh, I've just scattered some uh, shredded paper, a little bit of uh, oatmeal, and then I put down some pink sand. Now these units, they're not made for cut pile carpet like this. They are made, you know, for the flat pile you would see in commercial environments. And those are much easier to clean than this. So, I mean, this isn't its ideal situation, but just to demonstrate its ability, because I know these things are rated for about 200 CFM, which, granted, you know, we're spreading that figure, if it's accurate, over a 28-inch path, nearly twice the width of a standard vacuum. So, you know, I mean, it it should still do a decent job, but, you know, it's not going to seal down to these carpets like a lot of standard vacuums would, I'll, you know, because of that, uh, because of that brush strip on the back of here, I think, that would be a pretty big factor because I mean it's made it's there to prevent debris from scattering back but it's also going to provide like a breathing area so you know it can't seal down to the carpet like a standard vacuum would but yeah let's get the uh tripod set up here and we'll get on with this sorry not a lot of room to work here so <laughs> we're just gonna have to use this angle um I'm gonna get started
You know, I, I don't think we were really making very good contact with the carpet during that. I mean, it still did an admirable job, but I think I'm going to reset that and we're going to do that again. Because it's obviously making a little bit better contact now that I lowered it a notch. So, okay, so we have this set up again. Um, a little bit better, hopefully, this time. Because we're going to be making better contact with the carpet. So, take two. You know, despite it not being made for these types of carpets, it did pretty admirably. Um, I did notice, you know, it doesn't clean quite as well on the forward stroke for whatever reason, but as you're bringing it back, that's when it seems to do a more thorough job. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend pushing this machine around like a lawnmower, you know, you don't just want to go forward with this thing, you're going to you're going to want to drag this backwards, too, in order to get, uh, you know, better cleaning from it. So, is it worthwhile? I think so, you know, under the right circumstances. I mean, if you have a lot of carpet to cover, it wouldn't be a bad option. Because, I mean, there's other wide area vacs out there. Things from Windsor, things from uh, Advance, like the Carpet Reaver. And, you know, those would be things that are bypass units, you know, those have three motors to them, typically. Two suction motors and one, uh, one for the brush roll motor. But these units, the fan first ones, tend to be the most cost effective. From what I've seen, these usually run around 2000 sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. As to where the units like the Carpet Reavers, the Windsors... The bypass units tend to be closer to the upper 2000s, maybe even into the 3000 range. But, uh, you know, there's going to be pros and cons to both types, of course. You know, this is more simplistic. And, uh, you know, of course, it has the exposed fan there. Like I said, you want to be mindful of what you pick up, but you probably don't need to be overly paranoid about it. It's a thick metal fan. But the uh, the bypass units, especially, I'm really only familiar with the carpet retriever because we have one of those at work. And with, like, the carpet retriever, you know, you can't fold it down because it's a solid body piece. And then you would have, like, a shakeout bag option with those. Otherwise, there are disposable bags for it. As to where with these, I definitely wouldn't suggest using this as a shakeout bag. Zippers always leak. So... You would definitely want to stick to a paper bag with this. But going back to the carpet reaver, it's like they have a little uh, handle or a little grip you have to hold down in order to run the brush roll. So the brush roll on those can be used in the off position. And then they also feature like a little wand on the side. So you pull out this little lever and then you can use the wand. The wand isn't super powerful on those, but, you know, it's kind of nice to have. But, you know, if I mean, if you're just using it to clean a wide open area, I think one of these would be fine as long as people, you know, are mindful of what they're picking up. So, uh, Cameron, hopefully, hopefully this was helpful to you.